Hi, this is Scott Morse from Woody Cabinets Tips and Tricks. Today I'm going to show you how I created this half round fluted door column in e cabinets. What I've got here is I've got three separate display cubes. I've got the top portion, the trunk, and the base of the column. And I'm going to start out with the trunk and show you how I did that. What I did first was create a display cube the size of the trunk of the column at its widest point. And what I done was I went to display cubes, I selected my texture, hard maple there, and put in my dimensions. Now what we need to do is we need to work with this column from the very top of it. So we need to draw our cube up just like that. So what I've got is I've got a width of three and three quarters, a height of an inch and seven eighths, and the depth of 35 and 15 sixteenths. Here's our display cube. I'm going to take it into the part editor. I'm going to go into the contour mode and I'm going to create edges. And what I want to do is create a three point arc. I'm going to use this line right here to find the center of my arc. So I'm just going to offset that by an inch and seven eighths and I'm going to move it. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the lines that I don't need by deleting single, getting rid of these two lines right here and go ahead and create my three point arc. Now I have object snap turned on so it's going to snap to the very edge of that line right there and the very end of that one and the very end of that one. Now the next thing I need to do is make a series of lines on this arc here and 22 and a half degree increments. So I'm going to click on my line tool. I want to make sure that I have angle snap set to 22 and a half degrees and just click on the bottom here right there on that line and let it snap to 22 and a half. Make sure I'm past this arc here. I'm going to do that three times on each side of my arc there. Now I can trim these to this arc so I'm going to trim one entity Click on U and U. And I've got all those trimmed. Now what I need to do next is put a flute in here. And what I found out is that a 532nd radius flute works really good. You could play around with it, but just about anything any bigger than that, you're going to get a cannot perform sweep operation error. And that's because of the taper of the column that we're going to be putting on there. Um, the particular cutter that I'm going to be using has a 11 32nd inch taper from the very bottom of the column which would be nothing to the very top of the column which will be 11 seconds. Now you can play with that and I've already got all these cutters drawn up and I will post a link where you can download the tool file and follow along on with this if you want or you can create your own tools whichever you want to do. What I need to do here is I need to extend these lines by 5 64ths of an inch to allow me to put my little flute right here. So right now I'm in inches and decimals and that's what I want to be in. If I was in inches and fractions I need to change that to inches and decimals. So I'm going to extend my lines by 564 and go ahead and extend all these lines. Now I've got all those extended. I need to put a circle in here with a radius of 530 seconds. So I'm going to click on my arc tool here, click on circle and select the center point of my circle which is going to be on the top of that line and just type in 530 seconds. Now I want to copy the midpoint of this circle to the end of each one of these lines. So I'm going to select single, select my circle, select move, make sure copy selected and click on the very end of my line right there. Then click on the end of this line. Click again, click on that one. Do that for each one of these lines. Okay, I've got all my circles in here. The next thing I need to do is go ahead and remove all these lines. I don't need them anymore. So I'm going to delete inside intercept window. It's going to delete everything that's in that rectangle right there. Now I need to trim the bottom portion of this circle to this arc. So I'm going to click on trim one entity 
and I'm going to click on this section right here on that circle. Click right here and click on my arc. Now you can see how it broke it short of the arc. I can just click on this end of my arc there and click on my arc here and it will extend it to that line. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these just like that. And I'll be right back. Okay, I've got all those trimmed. Now the next thing I need to do is trim this actual arc here. I want to get rid of this portion of that arc and leave just what's in between each one of our flutes. Now what's going to happen when I trim this, it's going to get rid of the rest of the arc. And I don't want to have to redraw this three point arc each and every time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset it by one quarter of an inch. And I'm going to select copy and offset it in. And now the only thing I need to do is every time I trim this, I can just offset it and put it right back. And let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to trim one entity. I'm going to trim this portion to that flute right there. And you can see how the rest of it's gone. Now I can click my offset tool, click OK, and offset it. Trim one entity. I'm going to trim that one to right there and that one to right there. And just keep offsetting and do every one of these. Okay, I've got all that trimmed and all that looks real good. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my arc right here. I'm going to exit to contour mode. I'm going to create part using closed contour. And I'm going to keep the geometry on here for now. And see if I can apply my taper tool to this geometry. Sometimes you'll get an error. So let's see what happens. I want to click on my profile icon there. And I'm going to do a partial chain. I'll click right there and right here. Then next. And I'm going to select my tool. I've got my 3P75 dork trunk taper tool here. I'm going to select that and view. And click OK. And that worked pretty good. Now what I found out is sometimes I'll get an error. And that's more than likely on my end. A uh, graphic issue or whatever. But if you do, uh, just return the part to main. And keep the changes. Come back in and try it again. And more than likely it will work. Sometimes it will. Sometimes it won't. I don't know if it's a glitch on eCabinet's end or just in my graphics card but what I want to do next is I want to come into contour mode and I want to make sure that I do not have any entities on this part so I want to delete all entities and I can exit the contour mode and return to main so there's our part right there our tapered column right now it's not positioned like I want it so I'm just going to rotate that and get it positioned like I want it now the next thing we need to do is create our top so I'm going to click on this and I'm going to set my move increment to 12 and I'm going to just move it about 12 inches out of the way so I'm ready to make my top of my column there and so what I need is I need a width of 4 and 3 sixteenths a height of 2 and 3 30 seconds now that's my finished height what I want to do is I'm going to add about another 30 second to that so I'm going to tell it to be 2 and 8 inches and then my depth has got to be 4 and 13 30 seconds. I'm going to create cube. There's my cube and we're looking straight down on it. I'm going to select it. Go into part editor. And I'm going to do the same process. So I've got my edges created. I'm going to offset by 2 and 3 30 seconds. I'm just going to move that. Now what I need to do is I need to move, I need to trim this line off to one thirty second of an inch. So I can do two things. I can move this up to the height that I want my part to be, which is probably a good idea. So I'm just going to get rid of this and I'm going to offset by the height that I want my actual part, which is two and three thirty seconds. And I'm just going to copy this one. I'm going to click OK. Now I can trim this line right here to the top of this one. So trim one entity and delete that line. 
I don't need it anymore. Might as well get rid of that one too. Create my three point arc. Delete my center line there. Exit the contour mode. Create part using close contour. And I'm going to click no. I'm going to keep my geometry on here because what I want to do is I want to come back into the contour mode and I want to extend these, this arc down past because what I've had happen is when I apply my cutter to this sometimes it'll leave a little skin on the back side and I don't want that so I'm going to extend those lines by about a sixteenth. Now I can delete this line if I want to, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to exit the contour mode and I want to do chain single. Click on this and next and select my dork top cutter. Now if you guys want to see how I actually came up with the profile on those cutters, just let me know and I'll be more than glad to make a video. But there is a link where you can download them in the description. Just click on the link and download the folder and you can see here the cutter I've already got it offset and plunged to what I need it to be I'm going to click OK and I can click on my eyeball right here and check it out and see that, how it looks and that looks pretty good so I'm going to go back to main keep the changes now I need to rotate this so I'm going to select it I'm going to click rotate and I'm going to rotate it 270 on the X and 180 on the Y and OK. Now I want to align these so I'm going to leave that one highlighted and I'm going to click on this one and my align tool. Now if I hit Control M you'll see some nodes. There's a bunch of them in here. If I can zoom in right here Control M you see that I've got a node right in the center of the back. That's the one I want to select. So I'm going to select that node and there's one also on this one. I'll select that one. If you rotate it around you can make sure that you're not way up here somewhere. So I'm on the very back there and I want to select my align tool again and align to zero and escape. So that looks good right there, and it's got our top on there. Let's go ahead and do our base. I'm going to need another display cube. And this time, this one's going to be 4 and 3 quarters wide. By finish size is 2 and 3 eighths. So I'm going to make it about a sixteenth bigger. It's going to be 2 and 7 sixteenths. And then my depth is going to be 1 inch and 21 30 seconds. I'm going to create that cube. Take it into Part Editor, Contour Mode, Create Edges, and offset this line right here by 2 and 3 eighths. And I want to offset this one up to the height of my finished part size. So offset 2 and 3 eighths, and I want to copy that this time. So copy. And now I can delete that top line and this line and then trim one entity to there. Now I can go ahead and remove this one and create my arc. Go ahead and delete this one. Send this center line here. We don't need it. Exit the contour mode. Create part. And next. I'm going to keep the geometry on here and do the exact same thing I've done a while ago. I'm going to extend that by 1 16th each side of this. Go ahead and get rid of my bottom line here. Chain single. Next. And select my, my base cutter tool. And I've got that already plunged. So click OK and take a look at it. 
and that looks real good so let's go back to main and again we need to rotate this so I'm going to select it and rotate 270 and 180 and now I can stick that on the bottom of my column and again I'm going to select in the center of my column here make sure I'm on the back side select the top center of my base line tool Align to zero. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and move everything to the origin there. We got her in the center and we're good to go. Now I want to save that as an assembly. So I'm going to select each one of my parts and click on save. Just make sure that you got save assembly selected. Select the directory you want to save it in and give it a name. I've already saved this one time. Um, so I'm not going to do it again. Now what you can do is you can take this assembly and put it on any cabinet that you may have or stick it in the room or whatever. But if you put it on a cabinet, make sure that you associate all these parts to that cabinet. So that'll wrap it up for this video. In another video, I'll show you how you can export this as an HSF file and scale this to whatever size you need. But until then, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And hey, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe so you can get all my latest tips and tricks. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good day.